Hey, welcome to Gaivan. If you have ever traveled anywhere, you probably have experienced a culture shock. This is very common when you travel to a new country. And today I want to talk about some of the things that shocked me when I first came to China, but don't shock me anymore. There are many things that shocked me, but I'm going to talk about 10 things that shocked me when I first got here. Let's start with number 10. If you are subscribed to my channel, you might know that I was born and raised in a very small town in the Netherlands with a population of only two and a half thousand people. A tiny town, especially when you compare it to Chinese towns. But although it was a tiny town, it still had a train station. When I left my parents' house and moved out, I started to travel by train more frequently and saw multiple stations in the Netherlands. Some of those, like Amsterdam, Utrecht and The Hague, would overwhelm me as they are some of the largest stations in the Netherlands. I thought those were big train stations. So when I came to China and went on my first train ride from Beijing to Shaoxing, I was blown away by the size of the train stations here. It was just so big. And there were so many people. I remember I needed help to get to the right platform and train. Train stations are huge here in China and that absolutely shocked me the first few years I lived here. Train stations here are sometimes as large as airports in other countries and that was just amazing to see. But after a couple of years of living and traveling in China, I became familiar with the train stations and I am no longer shocked by them. Now it is much easier to navigate around those train stations. Security is usually fast and most of the signs are bilingual which makes it less intimidating. Speaking of sizes, on number 9 we find the amount of people here in China. Like I said, I grew up in a very small town in the Netherlands and even when I went to university, the city that I lived in had only about 160,000 inhabitants. Fairly small, I would say, after living in China for such a long time. But when I first arrived in Beijing, I was shocked by the size of the city as well as the amount of people. I felt like there were people everywhere. It felt like I ended up in a giant anthill. There were just so many people. The streets were always full with people walking, there was traffic everywhere, and subways were always packed, even outside rush hours. I remember being so shocked that I said I could never imagine living in a city like Beijing. Fast forward a few years and I ended up moving to and living in Beijing. Now big cities don't feel so overwhelming anymore. Busy places don't shock me too much. It's just become normal. Hi, if you don't know who I am, my name is Yvonne and this is my channel Go Yvonne. I have been living in China for 10 years now and to celebrate that I am making a special video series. This is the ninth episode in the series and I have already talked about food, traveling in China, living and working here. In this video I will be sharing 10 things that shocked me when I first came to China but that don't shock me anymore and seem normal now. If you like this video make sure to subscribe and to watch all the other videos in the series after you finish watching this video. Let's continue with number 8 on the list, a suitable shocker, now you know me a little bit better. On number 8 we find asking very personal questions. How do you feel when someone asks you why are you single or how much money do you make? If it makes you uncomfortable, you haven't lived in China long enough. When I first moved here and got these types of questions, it annoyed me a little. The fact that people will ask me nearly anything took some getting used to. And with people, I refer to pretty much everyone, from friends to co-workers to complete strangers who just met me. People always start by asking how tall I am. That's a question I don't mind being asked and that I understand. Even for a Dutch woman, I am considered tall. So here in China, people are really surprised to see me. But then, people will ask me other questions like, how old are you? Are you married? Do you have kids? What kind of work do you do? How much money do you make? And so on. Even co-workers would ask me if I was planning on having a baby, especially after I just got married. For me, this was a very shocking question because you don't just ask these questions. They are very personal and private. Now I'm used to it and those questions don't shock me anymore. Usually I will just brush them off and if they are not too personal, I will answer them. You might have noticed that I am in a nice park and that brings us to number 7. Because here in China you cannot sit on the grass in a park. In the Netherlands people love going to the park on a nice summer or spring day. 
They'll bring blankets, drinks, fruit, snacks, salads, and more to enjoy as they sit on the grass in the parks. The Dutch love it as you can enjoy the sun and it's an easy and fun way to meet with friends and family. After I arrived in Shaoxing and settled down, it wasn't long before I went to one of the parks. I had brought some snacks, a book and something to drink and was ready for a few hours of relaxing in the park. I had barely settled and gotten comfortable when I was already getting yelled at. A security guard was trying to tell me that I wasn't allowed to sit on the grass. At first, I wasn't quite sure what he was trying to tell me. I didn't speak Chinese at the time, but eventually I got it. I had to get off the grass. Well, so much for a relaxing afternoon on the grass. I was really surprised that I wasn't allowed to sit on the grass. I had not expected that. Now, it isn't shocking anymore and I understand it. If everyone would sit on the grass in the parks, the grass would be ruined and parks wouldn't be a nice place to visit. Some parks get thousands of visitors a day and if everyone sat on the grass, it would die in days. Number six on the list is something that a lot of foreigners struggle with when they first come to China, and that is drinking hot water. When I first came to Beijing, it was the middle of summer and really hot, and I could barely survive, so I drank lots of cold waters to stay hydrated. Then, autumn and winter came around, and the weather turned colder. It wasn't long before I noticed my co-workers drinking plain hot water. This seemed so bizarre to me. Why wouldn't you make tea out of it by adding tea leaves? Well, of course, some of my co-workers did, but I also saw plenty of colleagues just drinking hot water without anything added to it. This was a surprising thing to see and completely new. Of course, I was curious about this idea of drinking hot water and I learned that it has everything to do with yin and yang as well as with staying healthy. Hot water is part of the yin and will keep the yang under control, which will prevent you from getting sick. A lot of these beliefs are founded in traditional Chinese medicine, which, of course, was new to me when I first arrived here. Drinking hot water other than tea was a different and somewhat shocking concept to me 10 years ago. Now I've made it somewhat of a habit and I don't mind drinking warm to hot water. What's funny is that I can't drink really cold water anymore. Even on a hot summer day, it's too cold for me. We have made it to the top 5 of things that used to shock me here in China. If you are liking this video so far, make sure to hit that like button as it will help the video at my channel. Okay, let's move on with number 5. On number 5 we find squat toilets. This is something that at first sight can frighten foreigners, but given time, opinions can change. When I first arrived in China, I was really shocked by the bathrooms and the condition of most of them. I can remember visiting the hutongs and I walked into one of the many public bathrooms available. I'm not sure what I expected to see, but I wasn't ready to see open stalls as well as a woman doing her business. It was not long after this event that I learned more about bathrooms in China. Most of the time, public bathrooms are squat toilets, have no toilet paper and in the worst case, they don't even have a door. This was something that really shocked me. Needless to say, it took me some time to get used to the bathroom situation here in China. After a while, I got over that initial shock and, surprise, actually started to prefer squatting toilets over western toilets. Although bathrooms can get really gross here, in a way it's still cleaner to squat than having to sit down on a toilet seat that isn't clean and that you don't want to touch. The only thing you have to touch is the lock on the door. And sometimes, when there is no door, you don't have to touch anything at all. I have to say, now I always look for a squatting toilet when I am out and about. Another thing that shocked me when I first came to China was the fact that people could get in an argument over who would pay the bill. So number four is fighting over the bill at dinner. I had read that Chinese don't tend to split the bill when going out, but that usually one person pays. The next time people will go out, the other person might pay. Although I had read about paying the bill, I hadn't realized how intense this process could be. When I first witnessed this, I was shocked by the fact that people would basically push each other to the side to get to the waitress or raise their voice to convince the waiter to let them pay for the bill and not their friend. As I didn't speak a single word of Chinese when I first came here, I was very surprised whenever I witnessed these kinds of situations. 
Now, years later, I'm used to seeing this and it doesn't shock me anymore. It's almost entertaining to watch and see who will be able to pay for the bill. We have entered the top three on this list of things that used to shock me here in China, but don't shock me anymore. If you haven't liked this video yet, what are you waiting for? Hit that like button. On number three, we find something that is often in the news. We are talking about wet markets. Many news sites will talk about wet markets and how unsanitary they are. They might even blame them for outbreaks. I have to say that when I first entered one of these markets, I was repulsed. Seeing the meat, fish and vegetables out on tables with flies is difficult for a foreigner that normally buys everything nicely packaged. Over time, I got more used to this type of market and found that the prices and freshness of the goods was actually better than many of the foreign supermarkets. Now I can just shop at these markets without being overwhelmed or shocked. I think sometimes the media just gets it wrong. It is just a different way to shop. Number two is something that never really happens in the Netherlands and that is sharing food. Sharing food was a new concept for me when I first came here. In the Netherlands we have individual meals. Yes, you'll have a meal with your family and friends, but everyone has their own plate with food. If you are eating a standard Dutch meal with potatoes, vegetables and meat, each person will get his or her own plate and one piece of meat with potatoes and veggies on the side. Sharing food like we do in China isn't really an option. Even during something simple, like drinking a cup of tea with your friends or family, we don't share a big pot. Everyone gets a cup and one cookie and that's it. Food isn't nearly as social in the Netherlands as it is here in China. So you can probably understand that when I arrived here, things got really different for me. I was even laughed at by Chinese co-workers in the beginning when I chose one dish on the menu and wanted to eat that all by myself. I quickly learned about sharing food and made this concept my own. It's a great way to be able to eat a wide variety of dishes and eat more than just one dish. Now, I even want to order and share multiple dishes when I have dinner at a western restaurant. We have made it to the number one thing that used to shock me and honestly still sometimes does. And that is the enormous variety of food there is here in China. Like I've mentioned before, I came to China pretty much unprepared and not knowing anything about the country, the culture or the people. I had limited knowledge about the country and really didn't have any idea of what to expect. So I also didn't know what to expect of the food. What I knew about the food was basically what I knew from the Chinese restaurants in the Netherlands, which isn't really Chinese food. So as soon as I arrived in China, I learned that I didn't know anything about real Chinese food. I was in shock by all the food that I saw and could eat. It didn't look anything like what I had considered Chinese food until that moment. There was such a plethora of options. Endless variations on noodles, 10 different ways to use broccoli in a dish, flavors of spices I had never tasted or heard of before. An entire new world opened up to me and that was kind of shocking at first. I just didn't know where to start eating. After a couple of months and going for meals with my local friends and co-workers, I get used to the enormous variety of food and dishes here. There are just so many options and variations on dishes, the choices are endless. I really enjoy eating Chinese food and I love trying new dishes whenever I can and even now I still find new dishes and things to try. I'm no longer shocked when I hear of something new or a friend introduces me to my new favorite dish. So here you have it, 10 things that used to shock me when I first came to China but don't shock me anymore. I can now hop on a train with lots of other people, eat a lot of different foods, drink hot water and answer strange questions from strangers. I hope that if you come to China that you can also make these strange things normal. In my next video I'm going to be talking about how China changed. China has changed a lot in the past 10 years and I'm going to show you how it changed. Make sure to subscribe so you won't miss that video. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye.